Blue Wine Man TV. I am your host, Stanford Tan, and this is the Blue Collar Wine Show, where I help you spend your wine dollars wisely. And isn't that true? We like to be able to know when we buy a wine that it's worth what we're paying. It doesn't matter if it's $100, doesn't matter if it's $10, we want to know, right? You want to know, I want to know. I have the good fortune of being in the wine business. I, have, I work at a store, and sales reps bring me wine all the time. So I get to taste them before I buy them. And so I decided to do a wine tasting event where people can come and taste the wine before they try them. So, and now I have this YouTube channel where I'm really trying to show you guys what you're faced with and whether it's worth the money or not. There you go. So we're doing a blind Chardonnay. We're doing Chardonnay. Chardonnay, the number one selling varietal in the United States. Most planted Number one selling varietal, then behind it is Cabernet Sauvignon. And, you know, there's uh, there's not as many uh, Chardonnay haters out there as there used to be. I very rarely run into the ABC anything but Chardonnay movement. Um, uh, people have gravitated towards un-oak Chardonnay versus oak Chardonnay. Now I see people going back to oak Chardonnay. So, you know, that's good. That means our palates are flexible. They change. So I like to see that. I kind of like all kinds of Chardonnay. So in this lineup, we have a Chardonnay from Washington, a Chardonnay from California, and a Chardonnay from uh, the Bone in a White Burgundy, let's just say White Burgundy, from um, the land of Burgundy where they make Chardonnay and Pinot Noir mostly. Um, so it'll be interesting to see how these guys measure up to each other. Let's get started off right away with number one. Now I've got this now lower on the bag. It's taking me a while, but I do learn my lesson. A long time ago, I did an episode on some uh, Harlan Estate wines, <laughs> and I, I rinsed out one of the classes with the Harlan Estate, and I got a bunch of crap for that from a viewer. And I, I understand what he's saying entirely. But the bottles were given to me, I had to rinse them, and you know, I see, I know it seems kind of bizarre, but that's what I did. All right, number one. Chardonnay blind tasting. Let's see what we get on the nose. So this is definitely buttery on the nose. I would say either Washington or California. And that's a really big difference uh, in styles of Chardonnay. Usually if they're from Burgundy, they tend not to have oak, although I think some do oak them, uh, but not the, to the intensity that they do in California and some Washington State wines. Uh, Washington State is now coming out of the Coming out with better Chardonnay years ago. Couldn't find very good Chardonnay in Washington State. Now you can find a whole boatload of them. So this is like butterscotch, a little bit of pineapple coming through. Liked a lot of butter. I mean, butter and butterscotch and pineapple. Just a hint of pear. Let's see what we get on the palate. I wasn't going to spit anymore. Old habits die hard. See, because when I'm at work and the sales reps are coming to my office and we're tasting wine, I spit. I have to. But I kind of take it out of the episodes. Um, I think people like that a little bit better. Good integration. This has oak on it, but it's nicely integrated. Very fresh. Got a little bit of that buttery component coming through. Um, this has a lot of pineapple on it. A little bit of a, a toastiness on the finish. Good balance, not over oaked, not super exciting. Um, it has some complexity to it. Um, it's very neutral, I think, in a lot of ways. Uh, almost like it's trying to go Burgundian, but it has some California or Washington love handles. I like the balance of pear, pineapple, a little bit of butter. Um, wants to lean towards Burgundian in style, a little bit of toastiness on the back end. Good balance. This wine has great balance. This is kind of one of those Chardonnays that I think 
you know, if you like oak Chardonnay, you per might like this one. If you liked un oak Chardonnay, you might say, well, this is okay. Really not a ton of oak. I think it, has a, it crosses a nice balance. I'm not, like, super excited about it. Um, because it kind of is not finding where it wants to go. It doesn't quite go burgundy. It doesn't quite go uh, New World kind of uh, California sunshine or Washington sunshine, but it's got, it has good balance. It's fresh. I think you have to uh, factor that in. Not bad. Um, just like I said, not anything to write home about. Let's just say that. And um, I'm not going to guess whether it's California or Washington or Old World quite yet until I taste the other ones. But I, I have a feeling this might be California, but I don't know. Yeah. I think a lot of people would like that one. Uh, depends on the price, of course. Let's move on to number two. Number two. Give it a little rinse here. I still think that's funny. That guy said, you just rinsed out a f your glass with a 400 bottle of wine. It's like, oh, hey. Sorry. So we get on the nose. Number two. This has a butter on the nose, but it's a little bit more, uh, it's a deeper kind of buttery tone. It's not smashing the face like number one. Has a little bit of baking spice, which I always like in the Chardonnay. Do you like baking spice in your Chardonnay? I am going to ask a question for you to get guys to uh, to answer at the end of this episode. So stay tuned. I, I'm going to ask a question. I'd like your answers. I'm getting some... Oh, I keep forgetting. This is really golden in color. The other one wasn't quite as golden as this. Sorry I didn't show you that. Um, oh, hey. Let's compare them. I just so happen to have a glass here. Yeah. So number two, this number one versus number two. Look at that. A lot lighter. There you go. A lot darker. This would make smack of California, maybe. I don't know. The oak treatment will give it give it that uh, more golden color. The oak uh, adds to that. Uh, not quite as expressive on the nose as number one. I do get some pineapple and pear notes coming through. And like I said, there's this like kind of deep, uh, there's a little bit of baking spice and a kind of a deeper, more hidden, like an underbelly of uh, butterscotch butter. So we get on the palate. This is exciting. Do you like these, do you like these blind episodes? I do. It's kind of fun. I mean, I know in the Syrah one I did that hopefully you guys watched, uh, I was a little disappointed where my winery of the year wine fell, but it had some really, really tough competition. So I'm okay with that, really. But it, it you know, just goes to show you these aren't rigged. I mean, I certainly would have <laughs> loved to put that as my number one pick. The colors you see on this, this is, uh, doesn't show a ton of oak. Um, this definitely has more depth. That butter comes through. A little bit of lemon on the finish, which I find quite interesting. Um, the pineapple, kind of a toasty pineapple on the finish. I get a little bit of pear notes underneath. I'm more of the Asian pear notes, if you know what I mean. This might be the pricier of the two. Uh, I, I feel the depth, the complexity is there. Good balance. Has a little bit of acidity on the back end. Comes through as lemon a little bit. I'm liking this wine uh, for the depth factor. I don't know the price yet, but I'm thinking this is more expensive than number one. Um, just guessing. Real intense pineapple notes on the finish that almost turn into lemon, as I already stated. But 
Nice complexity. This is a good food Chardonnay. Yeah. Like that one. The oak is balanced. It comes through kind of heavy on the back side. I think if you had food with this, you probably wouldn't even notice it at all. But it does have oak for sure. And um, I'm going to go, yeah. But it's not off pudding. I mean, I think it's, this one's a little bit um, um, simpler than this one. Let's just put it that way. Um, yeah. Let's move on. Interesting. Very interesting. I don't think I've ran into the old row one yet, but we'll know. And I'll do this one. A little bit of a rinse. Color on this one. See, light, a lot like number one. You know, cool thing about blind tastings too, they can be humbling. There's number three. Because, you know, I feel like there's oak on that, but, you know. You know like, like I said, the color a little bit more golden than number one, not as golden as number two. Let's see that. Let's see what we get on the nose. A little bit of a minerality on the nose. Just a slight bit of butter, but not a lot. Like a little bit of wet stone. Very challenged, actually. Very challenged on the nose. Let's see what we get on the palate. This is unoaked. At least, I'm hoping, it, I'm hoping it's unoaked. As long as I've been in the business, you know, blind tastings are tough, and sometimes we get them wrong. You know, I'm not, I don't have a big ego on this matter, but I'm thinking this is old world. I get that real Chardonnay fruit. There's some apple and pear components coming through. Uh, a little bit of pineapple. Uh, I get a little bit of wet stone aspect to it. And once again, this is fairly simple. This reminds me a little bit of number one. Nothing super exciting about it, but I think if you're, you don't want a lot of oak, you're going to go for this one. Good balance. Nice and fresh. Uh, good minerality, but not over the top. Not crushed rock, all sort of thing, but just a nice balance to this wine. And, you know, a lot of people understand why they like unoaked. Sure. I mean, what do you like? Do you prefer unoaked? Or do you prefer oat? You might let me know in the comments. If you like, I don't know what you like. I know I can go all over the place. I had an oat char last night, and I loved it. But sometimes I like that oaky kind of buttery thing. Depends on my mood. How are you? Are you are you stuck on just unoaked? Are you stuck on oaked? Or do you not like Chardonnay at all? I'd like to know in the comments. Good balance. Um, nice. If this is an old world, if it is from Burgundy. I think it's a nice expression of burgundy depending on the price. Yeah. Okay. Ah, this is kind of dirty. All right, there we go. We got the lineup. Let's see how they pan out. Okay, in third place, oh, is that right? Oh, sorry. In third place, and I believe this is one I thought is from Burgundy. Um, very simple, good expression of Burgundy wines. I gave it a B minus, which is a great, a decent grade, really decent grade. I liked it, I just thought it lacked some complexity. So the B minus, we have the, oh, I was wrong. Way to go, Trey. Way to go, Trey. Very, very Burgundian. I thought this was a Burgundy. See? See what I'm saying? See what I'm saying? I was wrong. This is a 2016. The Enchantress. Uh, Sleight of Hand Cellars. The Enchantress Chardonnay. Yakima Valley. Old Vine Chardonnay. A nice job, Troy. I mean, trade. I mean, really. 
Uh, this is usually one of my favorites. This is $28. Um, once again, I thought, I thought burgundy on this one. I really did. Uh, nice minerality. I mean, you get, if you can come that close to white burgundy from Washington State, you should be proud of yourself. Uh, B minus, not a, like I said, not a bad grade at all. Let's move on. B minus B. Now, since this is Washington State, I'm going to guess this one as burgundy. The B minus B. So really close to Trey's wine, side of hand sellers. This is the, uh, yeah. Uh, the Domain D. <laughs> Should look this up. Prior from Stephen Maurice, Sonny Lebon. This rolls in at twenty-four dollars. There you go. So this is white burgundy. Um, very very impressed that Trey came that close to this one. I thought they had the same coloring. Um, this head was a little more gold than what should have kind of told me. But yeah, B minus B. So very close. A few bucks difference, trades a little bit more money. There you go. So, with a B plus, obviously from California. That's what we got. Okay. The Hansel Sabella Chardonnay, Sonoma County, uh, Hansel Vineyards, uh, thirty-four dollars. Uh, these guys produce some top-notch Chardonnay. I thought this had more complexity, more depth than the other two. But this is stiff competition, 34 bucks. There you go, Hansel Sabella Chard. So, there you go, humbled once again. I missed on the old world, new world. But, once again, I will, you know, little asterisks here. You know, nice job, Trey, in producing a very white Burgundian style Chardonnay. There you go, there you go. Three Chardonnays. What did you think? So, my question to you is, do you like, un I already asked it, do you like un -oak, or oak Chardonnay? Are you a Chardonnay hater? Why are you a Chardonnay hater? I want to know the answer to that. And where do you prefer to buy your Chard from? Do you prefer white burgundy? Do you prefer California? Do you prefer Washington State? Let me know. Thanks for taking a little time out of your day to watch. I really appreciate it. Don't forget to subscribe to my channel. It means a lot to me. Thank you very much. I'm growing in that category. You keep watching, and I'll keep helping you spend. Your wine dollars wisely.